Hey everybody, welcome back. This is the Boolean section for the, well, I guess it's the Boolean's lesson for the variables section. I don't really worry about those. But anyway, this is Boolean's as part of module zero in the variables unit. And eh, we'll go with unit. Anyway, the video walkthrough of this lesson is gonna go right here. And so what are Booleans? Uh, again, we're gonna do it by just running some code and kind of having a look at it. So here's some code that's gonna describe Booleans for us. If I come back here, this is the function from our previous lesson. I'll paste the code in. So is raining is equal to true. So I've assigned a variable equal to true. That's one type of Boolean. And if I console.log that, I'll see true. And if I, on line four, I'm saying variable is vegetarian, I'm saying that equal to false. So uh, let's first, let's go ahead and run the code. Oh geez, vegetarian is not defined. Ah, yes, because I changed this a moment ago to is vegetarian and it is, gotta have it on both. Um, well, let's look at the error real quick because this might be the first time that you've seen an error. So it says reference error, vegetarian is not defined. And then it says that eval machine, maybe this is kind of confusing, but for our purposes, 513 is our best bet because if we go back to what the code was, you can see that 513 here describes that uh, on line five, 13 characters in. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So right here is where it's like, hey, at space 13, you said vegetarian, but I don't have anything that's called vegetarian. Now, if you recall, that might be a little bit of a stretch for this one. So let's just leave this as is. I am going to leave this error in the video, but I will change this uh, during the, um, for the actual code for the, on the page. So what you'll see will look like this, and hopefully when you run it, it will look like that. Uh, but the error I'm going to leave in the video just because it, it never hurts to watch somebody go through an error with, um, you know, kind of the way that they would. So later on, you can kind of follow the same process. But anyway, you can see that there are two types, or sorry, two actual values that a Boolean type variable can have, true and false, which makes sense because something is either true or it's false when it comes to computer programming. We come back here and we're going to find out that we discovered what they are gonna say, which is one of each possible value that a Boolean type variable can have is true and false. Excellent work. So, sorry, okay, there's some people yelling outside of my apartment, but I just looked down and you cannot hear them, so not to worry. Anyway, return values for functions, as we're gonna come back to for each one of these. Uh, we discussed previously when you have a function that doesn't return anything, it's gonna return undefined by default. So now we're gonna do two examples, uh, one for true and one for false. So I'm gonna copy my code come back over here and replace this. First we will declare a function that takes no parameters, does nothing, and returns true. Now when we mean does nothing, what we're saying there is that it's not going to like manipulate the parameters or create any new variables on its own. It does return true, but we're gonna consider what it returns and what it does to be, at least for the moment, kind of separate. Because what we're saying by does nothing is that it's not creating any new variables, any of that kind of stuff. It does return true, so when on line five I say, uh, okay, so again, this is the definition of the function, and then on line six, we're going to call that function, and I'm going to say variable true result is equal to is true, and then I'm calling the function here. Uh, this line calls the function, assigns the value to return to true, true result, which we've been doing the entire time, but now the function actually returns something. So true result is going to have stored as its value true, and if we run this code, we'll go ahead and see that that's what's logged to the console. And we're in good shape. So let's go back and we'll do the exact same thing, but this one's gonna return false. And we're gonna walk through it the same way. Function does nothing. Here's the name of the function. This is what makes it a function. Um, there are other ways to write functions, but I would highly suggest that you stick to this way until you get more comfortable with the idea of functions and how they work. Then it'll be much easier for you to kind of sub in functions later on. Variable false result is equal to is false. So I'm calling the function here. And as we noted up top on line one, a function takes no parameters, does nothing, meaning all the stuff we just mentioned, and returns false, just the value directly. So this line calls the function and assigns the value return to false result. And then on line seven, we're gonna console.log false result. So if we go ahead and run this, we're gonna get false logged to the console. And again, we're in good shape. So those are two functions that have returned Boolean values. And I know it might seem like we are taking a very, very quick glance at all of these, but that is on purpose. What you want to get used to is the idea of we are building functions. These functions are going to slowly get more complicated as we go. We have a variable assignment and then we have a function for each one of these uh, data types. 
So now we have our Boolean coding challenge. Um, oh no, I already have the answer there, but that's okay. So we set input, it's gonna look like this. Uh, since this is a solution video, it doesn't really matter that the function was there. Uh, now we're going to complete a function that takes no parameters and returns true. Add a statement that will cause this function to return true when ran. So this is our first example of a coding challenge that we actually have to do something. So if you're completely stuck, what you might consider doing would be going back to the rest of the lesson and seeing if there's anything here which can help us identify an answer. So it may not be obvious, but this right here is going to be our best bet. What we need is we need a function that's going to return true when we run it, and we do that by this line right here. So I'm going to copy this, bring it on down, and return true right there. Now when I run my tests, it's going to say correct because it should return true. And that's pretty much it for this lesson. So we've gone over undefined, now we've gone over booleans, and in the next lesson we're going to be doing numbers. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.